please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome to a special feature on CNBC TV 18, Nava Karnataka, a state of continuous progress. Now we're going to focus on another sector, a sector which has been facing a lot of pressure, not just for Karnataka, but across the country, the state of agriculture. But here in Karnataka, the government and private players are trying to come together to try and relieve farmers of their distress. And of course, technology is playing a crucial role. Let's take a look at what's really happening in agriculture as far as the state of Karnataka is concerned. In India's eighth largest state, Karnataka, agriculture is the major occupation for a majority of rural population. And to attain overall empowerment of farmers to achieve sustainable livelihood, Karnataka government is ensuring improved productivity, income security through climate resilient technologies, value addition and reform market network. Let's take a look at their course of action. The focus now shifts to the agriculture sector, where with a combination of the use of technology, innovative schemes for farmers, the government has been trying to do its best, but let's talk at length to really understand uh, the state of the sector and what it has planned ahead. I have with me the Minister for Agriculture, Mr. Krishna Bare Gauda, right here. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank and, you. Uh, Agriculture, I think, has been a challenge, uh, not just at the state level, but also at the central level, because we've seen growth rates dipping, yeah. particularly for the state of Karnataka. And this is a subject very close to your heart that you've been monitoring. Uh, what uh, are the steps that you've been taking to improve productivity, to really bring in that kind of innovative change that Karnataka is so known for? Our chief minister and our government have been more focused on the sources of the problems. For instance, agriculture marketing is riddled with middlemen, multiple uh, levels of uh, middlemen, who actually siphon a large part of the retail rupee. Hence, a smaller percentage actually reaches farmers, hence farmers make less, and that leads to crisis. So having realized that in, the, in, 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 in our first year of government itself, we brought in market reforms in agriculture marketing. So we introduced online markets. Mm -hmm. We have integrated all agriculture markets into one platform, unified market platform. So we have tried time and again tried to come to the rescue of farmers. So, so this is on the, uh, on the prices side. Right. Karnataka is a large rain-fed agriculture state. Uh, our vulnerability to climate and climate change and droughts is very high. Our exposure is very high. Hmm. So we have realized that unless we do something serious for the rain-fed farmers, the dryland farmers, uh, we will not be able to secure farmers' interests or incomes. So we have come up with a program, Krishi Bhagya, where it's about harvesting the rainwater. And in terms of uh, you know cropping patterns. Uh, is that again something uh, that you're looking at using technology to bring in more hybrid varieties which require less water and in that sense change or shift the agricultural pattern somewhat in the state? So we are looking at not just uh, water saving crops or uh, uh, methods but we are also looking at low water requiring crops. Crops, correct. So Karnataka is very aggressively pushing moving millets towards a, uh, a more climate resilient, climate smart uh, agriculture uh, while looking at conventional crops like paddy and sugarcane, but we are also uh, taking a, the lead hmm. in developing this climate smart uh, strategy uh, for future. How do you see the role of uh, private players in the sense uh, when you talk about uh, you know price discovery, uh, the leaning towards certain kinds of crops which have a further market demand. Um, how have you tried to integrate that process, whether it's through technology or through market mechanisms? Uh, we are now look, uh, looking very actively at uh, agri-tech startups. Uh, some of them are app-based uh, service providers who are trying to connect uh, farmers as directly with consumers as possible. Hmm. So I think this uh, various forms of e-commerce portals uh, offer a lot of hope mm -hmm. in 
in, in connecting consumers with farmers and in price discovery and also in efficient movement uh, Such of Such as your goods. homegrown uh, companies like Big Basket, for instance. Yes, uh, we have uh, worked with established group li groups like Big Basket as well. Hmm. We are connecting Big Basket directly with our farmer groups. Hmm. But uh, there are also startups which are also in that space. So perhaps Karnataka is uh, perhaps the only state which is uh, government is funding agri-tech startups. Thank you, uh, Minister, for that comprehensive layout as far as uh, the state of Karnataka is concerned. Clearly, the challenges are many, but I think you are there on a war footing to tackle each and every aspect of it. Thank you and all the very best. Thank you for talking to us. Now let's move on to the part about farmer distress. And as we know, it's a problem that exists across the board, particularly when it comes to the particular issue of price discovery. And the state of Karnataka has been at the forefront, especially with the, the setting up of what is an online platform for farmers to enable better price discovery. It's called the Rashtriya E-Market Services. Let's meet with the person who is clearly the architect of REMS, uh, Mr. Manoj Rajan. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajan, for joining us. Um, as I said, uh, price discovery has always been a bane as far as farmers are concerned because the middleman eats away most of the uh, money. But uh, in Karnataka, you have tried to come up with a very unique and uh, fairly effective solution. Tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, Karnataka has, has really uh, jumped very deep into these agrarian problems of farmer as far as marketing is concerned. Right. It constituted an agriculture market reforms committee to come and study scientifically the problems plaguing the market industry and come out with a set of recommendations. The first recommendation was a single unified traders license enabling trader from one market participate in all the markets of the state. And this is unique to Karnataka. This is the first time such kind of a single unified trader's license concept has been spoken about and brought about. Right. right? So this is first recommendation. So then mm -hmm. we brought in the unified market platform wherein the trader sitting in any part of the globe with this license can look at the commodities available on each of the markets in Karnataka. Today we have registered 46 lakh farmers on this platform. Mm -hmm. We have got their mobile numbers and bank accounts such that we send periodic SMSs to the farmers right. informing at what prices their commodity is being sold. And the time when we go on online payment, we are in a position to directly transfer their money into their accounts. So this is a truly efficient price discovery mechanism that you've got for the farmer. Karnataka is unique to take out this uh, stakeholder education program in 22,000 villages. We mm. chose few farmers, trained them and they in turn trained the farmers down the line. Right. Let us keep monsoons aside, but market should be the strength and that is what the government of Karnataka is working to see that markets are strength to the farmer rather than being against his interests. I think uh, that effort is well appreciated and one can see the passion with which you are leading this project. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rajan, for joining us and explaining uh, the efforts behind uh, REMS and, of course, uh, the whole host of online solutions available for farmers. Thank you so much. Thank you. And joining us now on the show is M. Maheshwar Rao, Principal Secretary, Agriculture. Thank you so much, Mr. Rao, for joining us. We were just speaking to the minister a little while earlier and he was uh, talking about the state of uh, agriculture in Karnataka, which has been under great duress, particularly because of the fact that water has been in scarcity and we've been seeing droughts for many years now. Uh, how have you been approaching this particular problem? The state has got, uh, state is one of the largest in terms of uh, arid areas, I think after Rajasthan. Uh, only 35% is irrigated and uh, that means about 65 lakh hectares of the state uh, has a shortage of or is rain fed. Mm -hmm. Now, the best way to go about approaching this is to wean away farmers from water guzzling uh, crops, go in for a little more diversification in crops, uh, ask farmers to take up integrated farming systems, mm -hmm. which is also something we want to promote. In that context, crop insurance is one of the schemes and your state has been at the forefront. Does that uh, provide protection? Have farmers been open to adopting it? Uh, we were one of the states which had a huge uh, enrollment in uh, Kharif and Rabi of 2016-17, mm -hmm. uh, close to around uh, about 16 plus 10, around 26 lakh hectares was taken up for uh, insurance, mm -hmm. uh, both in Kharif and Ravi put together. 
one of the issues which we find is that we would like more farmers to get enrolled. We have been slowly targeting an increase from about 7 percent to 8 percent coverage. We have reached around 17 percent and we hope to uh, increase the proportion of land covered over the next couple of years. So, one element is you have crop insurance. The other yes. is of course, you said changing crop pattern. Yes. Um, when you talk about changing crop pattern, uh, at the same time uh, does changing the minimum support price for different crops, does that help in encouraging farmers to do the same? How do you actually get farmers to change their crop ma uh, pattern? See, one is uh, we have uh, we have started taking a focus on promoting or reducing the risk to farmers in their crop itself. We have introduced a scheme called Krishi Bhagya. Mm. Uh, that is a scheme where you can provide life saving irrigation to your rain fed crop. That is when rain comes in, though it comes in discontinuous spells, mm. uh, you can store the water, use micro irrigation and provide life saving irrigation. So, this has been quite successful close to about uh, 1800 crores has been spent. In addition to this, we try to encourage farmers who have taken this to go in for uh, irrigation under protected conditions, which means right. that you provide a poly house to them. So, they can go in for high value horticulture. So, this pushes or incentivizes the farmer to go in for a different kind of practice than what he was used to most of the time. I know there is a lot more we can talk about but yeah. unfortunately time is of the essence but Mr. Rao many thanks and uh, giving us an insight of all the hard work and thought that is going behind pushing this sector towards a higher trajectory of growth. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. So that was Mr. Rao, we will continue with our discussion and exploration of the agriculture sector and we will have many more speakers on board stay with us. Really when it comes to the area of technology and uh, using technology to effectively improve productivity uh, issues yeah. such as uh, water usage. How are you going about it? Priority of Karnataka state is to you know increase water use efficiency. We have a lot of technologies to bring in water use efficiency. The first and foremost in sugarcane, we are promoting instead of flood irrigation, our objective is to bring 100 percent sugarcane under micro irrigation systems. Right. Generally when we talk of micro irrigation it is drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. So the drip irrigation no doubt it is cost intensive. So there are certain agronomical practices also when farmer want to adopt to drip in sugar cane we prescribe certain minimum spacing. Okay. So certain minimum spacing. So wide, wider spacing is the one which we are recommending for sugar cane hand in hand with uh, drip irrigation systems. So you said expensive. Yes. Uh, when it comes to technology, initial mm. adoption is always a bit of a challenge and in this case you are looking at farmers. Yes. So, how are you going about uh, helping farmers to go ahead and adopt these new technologies? In a way, if we take the uh, issue of uh, drip irrigation in Karnataka, for the last 10 years almost, you know, state government is very actively engaged with uh, drip irrigation systems. We have our partners with uh, major irrigation uh, uh, drip providers. So hand in hand, we want to associate with sugarcane factories also, who have direct contact with farmers. So we want to bring in a scenario, synergy between the farmers, sugarcane factories, as well as these technology providers. Mm -hmm. So we have specially trained manpower also in the area of, uh, you know, uh, going for sugarcane uh, drip irrigation systems. And do you give the farmers some subsidy or yes. some capital uh, yes. support? Yes, yes. We, we do give capital support to farmers. In Karnataka, we have a policy close to 90 percent of the capital cost we give subsidy to farmers. Drought has been a persistent problem as the minister was also pointing yeah. out and Karnataka mm. is, has mm. been one of the worst hit. How large a role does technology play in uh, other than the water irrigation and the water systems that you have said? Uh, any other aspects as well that you are looking at? We are advocating to shift the type of cultivation instead of flood irrigation in rice what we are calling in paddy cultivation. Uh, this Siri method or dry seeded rice technology. So, I there see. is technology available. Advantage of this technology you need not wait for the reservoirs to get full then wait for that protocol of water release and things mm -hmm. like that. So, whatever little rainfall occurs in those areas farmers you can put it to maximum use. Farmers can take advantage of that they can take up sowings. Hmm. They, as and when the monsoon catches up, they can have a, have a follow up supportive irrigation kind of thing. Right. So, okay. this is one area we want to promote in our command area, so that there is farmer need not depend totally on the 
रेन बट द रिजर्वायर गेटिंग फुल एंड द वाटर गेटिंग रिलीज फ्रॉम द रिजर्वायर दे कैन स्टार्ट ऑफ द कल्टिवेशन वेन एवर दर इज ए मानसून और रेनफॉल अकर्स ईवन दो द रिजर्वायर इज नॉट फुल कल्टिवेशन प्रैक्टिस कैन बिगिन सो एज द क्रॉप अडवांस बै द टाइम इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड देर विल बी सम वाटर इन द रिजर्वायर सो दे कैन मेक यूज ऑफ दट अडिशनल वाटर सप्लाई एंड हारवेस्ट द क्रॉप दिस इज वन थिंग वी वॉन्ट टू यू नो वर्क विद द फार्मर्स एंगेज लोकल कम्युनिटीज एज वेल एज एंगेज रिसर्च इंस्टिट्यूशंस एंड हैव ए ऑर्गेनिक एसोसिएशन विद अवर यूनिवर्सिटीज सो दैट यू नो देर इज ए कंप्लीट अप्रोच in educating the farmers and bringing in new technology approaches right this mr satish i think this is these are very yeah. vital components to help mm. alleviate farmer distress mm. and help us understand a little bit more thank you so much thank for you. joining thank us you. on the show thank you and joining us now on the show is uh, neeraj kakkar co-founder and ceo at hector beverages or rather the brand that you and i are more familiar with and that's paper boat so, thanks neeraj for joining us uh, happy to be here So uh, Neeraj love your office uh, it's so bright and cheerful and that's how your product is as well yeah. paper boat um take us through what it's been like your journey because you've come all the way here to Bangalore yeah. leaving behind your hometown uh, yeah. in Gurgaon yeah. um you know man, many would ask you why make that trip when you could have set it up right there the reason for being here is because it's a beautiful state like it's a uh, it's, it's uh, the weather is great people are uh, very very nice mm-hmm. and it's very very conducive for doing the business and the energy for starting up is all over like it's it's less just inspiring to be just being here and doing the things which we do but you know a majority of entrepreneurs that i speak to they say they find a lot of comfort in being from their where they are because they know the systems they know the government structure they know the policy in that sense was this new ground or did you find it fairly easy to go about setting up those building blocks no no very very easy i think uh, so we shifted here um, uh, uh, so one of our earliest investors is mr narayan murthy so i think that's there was some peg here so like mm-hmm. it's not that it's an unknown place mm. so he he being here uh, you know is 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 some sort of a hall, hallowed ground for us like you know you right. just want to this like our makkah medina type like you <laughs> just want to be here somewhere around this place now you're competing with the big boys your own former employer coke is a big player in this market along with all the others yeah. so uh, you know how, how do you sort of play this game when financially you guys have grown quite a bit but you still you know minuscule compared to the big yeah, players yeah, yeah. so are you now in the volume game are you still in a very niche space where do you take it from here what are things which we are probably good at is a our brand is strong like we have built a very strong brand this is a very strong deep rooted indian ethos and right. i think uh, i think it will be very very difficult for a large multinational company to have that connect at the very very ground level because these are very strong like deeply rooted in sites essentially right. because you've grown up in a small town doing all of that stuff essentially you're building this brand like a brand which originated in probably a foreign country would not have the same connect like is 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 so you ma- you've been able to mark your territory in that yeah, sense yeah. the second big moat for us is this product innovation thing right like so we spend a lot of energy behind getting our products right uh pivot as a brand is like two parts alive is the contemporary cool the brand branding part but the authentic is the soul of the brand hmm. so we when we make our amras we are the only company only company in this world now hmm. like i'm not going to india which is naturally ripening our mango so, and you do most of your r&d here in bangalore so we have three centers of r&d so hmm. we are um, one in manesar where we do the uh, the drinks and beverages thing and then there is like one uh, in mysore which is there in our plant hmm. where we do some uh, more um, uh, edging edge work around sugar cane like we're working a lot around sugar cane like can we get sugar cane juice to go to market and the third one is around foods which is in bangalore oh i see and foods you're launching those uh, the chickies and uh, yeah correct so uh, it's like you so if your goal is to protect these traditional age old recipes hmm. then you have to protect the food recipes also hmm. and there are so many thanks so much neeraj it was wonderful getting to know you your company uh, this wonderful office that you have and your two dogs hector yeah. and beverage yeah, yeah. <laughs> that brings us to the end of the special feature on agriculture do remember to catch the nava karnataka conclave on february the 24th until we meet again thanks for watching